Welcome back to Homeowner Talk. Joining us now is Melissa Mills. Melissa is the Vice President of Classic Landscapes. Melissa is here to talk about the new programs that are available to help keep the lawns and uh, foreclosed properties looking good. Melissa, thanks for joining us. Hi, John. Thanks for having me. Will you tell our viewers a little bit about yourself? Well, I originally moved to Las Vegas from Colorado. I've been a resident here in Nevada for about 20 years. And during that time, I've owned and operated several small businesses, and I'm currently the vice president of Classic Landscapes. And in my capacity there, I have the ability, you know, to work in just all the different um, aspects of the company from um, hiring and evaluating employees to creating and implementing programs and policies to identifying and developing new markets. So it's pretty exciting stuff. That's great. Now, Melissa, I know you were very familiar with the last legislative <laughs> session and some of the new laws that came into effect that now allow homeowners associations, if properties are in foreclosure or vacant, to enter into the property if need be to take care of the landscaping that's been allowed to, to either die or be removed or whatnot. And maybe you can uh, just tell our viewers a little bit about, you know, how do you handle those situations? What can associations do now uh, to, in order to make their neighborhoods look a lot better? Well, you know, at Classic Landscapes, we work very closely with our community managers and our board of directors, and we've been very proactive in instituting a program wherein we provide the written and photographic documentation that allows the associations to then go back and recover the costs, you know, um, in conjunction with these cleanup efforts. And what they do in turn is they notify us when one of those properties meet the criteria, and we dispatch our team onto the property to perform the different tasks required to bring the property back into compliance with the community standards according to the governing documents and you know that might be as simple as just mowing a lawn or pulling some weeds or as complex as having to trim trees and bushes and shrubs and remove a lot of dead plant material possibly cap off the irrigation if the meters are off so it really just depends on what state the property is in when we take over and the various tasks we're going to be able to perform. And that's, that's kind of interesting when you think about it the associations certainly have certain statutory rights now but there's a certain protocol that needs to be followed and sometimes that could be a little bit confusing so it's good to hear that you work with the community associations and the community managers to make sure that the protocol is properly f followed in order for them to do what can be done Oh legally. yeah, absolutely. Uh, That's very important. I think it's also interesting that, you know, are you seeing a, a, a difference in maybe associations being more willing to do this? Because with the new change in the law, now if, if an association incurs an expense to properly maintain, they do the follow the procedures David was mm -hmm. talking about, and they go on the property and they, they repair, they clean it up, the landscaping, now they can recover that when they lend or if the bank were to foreclose, then you can recover that as part of your, what they call the super priority portion of the association's lien. So are you seeing that more people are, or more associations are willing to do that now? Oh, absolutely. It's been a great uh, program for a lot of our clients. They are really taking advantage of this opportunity because as you know, as you clean up these properties, you deter vandalism for one. Mm. You help to, uh, you know, protect the values of the homes within the community and it sends a real positive message out there to prospective home buyers and, you know, the sooner you turn these houses around, the you know more money that equates to in the association coffers down the road. So, yeah, that's incredible. Um, so tell me again, what, tell our viewers uh, what your company is doing to try to help these associations get through this, you know, this kind of economic downturn, but trying to bring them back up to affecting and improving their values in their property. Well, as you know, these ver these economic times have affected all of us, and and you know a large part of that is within the association, you know, industry. So what we've taken uh, an approach as a company to do was freeze a lot of our rate increases for our existing clients during 2010. We've also moved to an all-inclusive program, an all-inclusive contract, which eliminates a lot of the back-end fees that the associations are being nickeled and dimed to death with. So you know it allows them to understand what their landscaping budget is going to be what the bottom dollar is going to be to help them stay you know within the budget that their managers have helped them to create and then also you know we're very proactive in education and not only do we train our employees on an ongoing basis to make sure they're performing efficiently for the clients but you know also you know partnering with great programs like homeowner talk and the southern nevada water authority that's great well we would like to thank our guests today jason ekis of remax central Annette Bubak of Dis, uh, Distinct Energy Performance, Dr. Lisa Morris-Hibbler from the City of Las Vegas, and of course, Melissa Mills of Classic Landscapes. That's all for this edition of Homeowner Talk. We'd like to thank our partners, Alliance Association Financial Services, Classic Landscapes, LLC, Nevada Association Services, Inc., and Western Risk Insurance. Join us next month for our discussion on insurance. 
Remember, you can always find information about this program, and you can also drop us a line at homeowner talk TV .com. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time on Homeowner Talk. <laughs>